that a pink, pink slip you see at the end of the custom Trivia. item in that one that says you're fired is actually a stock photo that Scott found online. In <laughs> fact, if you Google pink slip, you will see this exact same pink slip appear within the very first Google image results. And finally, if you pay really close attention to the pink slip in Five Nights at Freddy's, it's you can so see photoshopped. very, very small white spots along its border. And then for trivia number nine is that Scott Cawthon, the creator of FNAF, has a second identity online, an alter ego, if you will, called LOL's Hacks. It's an account he made on Game Jolt, and he uses it every once in a while to post quote-unquote leaked versions of his unreleased games. These leaked versions of his games are actually not leaked versions at all, but rather reskins of his previous games, where he replaces the sprites of the old games with FNAF sprites. And F number 8 is by Mark Bros 612 and that is that the Little Freddy that you see on Nightmare Freddy in FNAF 4 are actually called Freddles. The term Freddles was originally created by fans as a joke, but this was actually recently made canon by Scott, and we know this because in the FNAF World trailer, you can see Nightmare Freddy use an ability called Freddles, oh, which when that. used, of course, unleashes his little army of tiny Freddles. This isn't the first time that Scott picked a name with the help of the community. Back in FNAF 1, Golden Freddy was actually named Yellow Bear, but after the community dubbed it Golden Freddy, that became the name starting from FNAF 2. And then for number 7, I'm not sure if this is a joke or not, but after someone asked Scott who voiced Phone Dude, Scott said that he literally just found some random guy outside and asked him to voice Phone Dude. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know, maybe he was joking, or maybe he was telling the truth, what do you guys think? <laughs> That's scary. I'm sorry, F I number like six that. is by Sonic Ye2, and that is that he noticed in the FNAF World trailer that Nightmare Mangle has an attack called Mystery Box. The trailer doesn't actually show what this attack does, but it is quite intriguing when taking into account the Mystery Box from FNAF 4, which, by the way, is still a mystery. Is there any link between them? Is it the same mystery box? Could it maybe even reveal what's inside the mystery box when you use that ability? I guess there's only one way to find out, to wait until FNAF World is released. And if number 5 is that if you played the FNAF World Halloween Edition and you actually got to the end of the game, you would fight a boss enemy called Purplegeist. Now the name of this enemy is obviously a play of the word Poltergeist and Purple, but here's what's interesting. A Poltergeist is a type of ghost that haunts a particular location really and that has the ability to just possess and move around objects. In my opinion, this might be a hint by Scott that the source of all evil in the FNAF series is a Poltergeist. And F number 4 is that Scott Cawthon actually recently released toys for the FNAF franchise. These these are official FNAF toys that he worked with ToyWiz to create. However, these toys were met with harsh criticism from the community, which was sparked when the FNAF subreddit moderator, Pop Goes the Weasel, made a post attacking these toys. This created a pretty big controversy within the FNAF community and led to Scott promising to revise the toy design. And F number three is that you may have noticed that in the FNAF World teaser, a rainbow is sometimes present on the teaser image. This rainbow has been a source of in intrigue for the community, as it sometimes appears Sorry in the teaser the lag. and then disappears for no known reason and also at very irregular intervals. Ooh, they got even there. sometimes announced on Steam that the rainbow was coming, but then he would take it out again. The significance of the rainbow is still unknown, although it is believed that this may very well just be a joke played by Scott. Oh, and F number two is remember that teaser back when FNAF 3 was yet to be released with Nightmare Beast's burnt face and the number 10 right ne next to it? Well, for a very long time, the significance of this number had been a mystery. Until recently, where Scott actually said in a Steam post why that number was there. He revealed that he originally 
she planned to have 10 teasers leading up to FNAF 3. Mm. And that this teaser was the first. He was gonna count down from 10 to 1, and then he was gonna release the game. However, as usual, Spot released the game early, and so of course he only had time to post one teaser. And now finally, for number 1 is by Evan D. Zero. And Evan found out the real year in which FNAF 1 takes place. We never really knew the exact answer, except that it took place in the early 1990s, where most people actually speculated that. Well, that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Again, thank you guys so much for 80 subscribers. It's amazing. Expect some big things to come on the channel. And don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll be back tomorrow with two more reaction videos. Sorry about yesterday, I didn't have any, but. I'll be back tomorrow with two more. Peace.